Hi and welcome back to another video again RTX 4090 content. We will be talking about the Strix with the XOC BIOS but today with liquid nitrogen overclocking. Right now we have no idea how cold we can go on the card if it's like minus 40, minus 60, minus 100. That's something to find out and then I will be quite curious to see what kind of clocks we can achieve for example in Port Royal. Right now we have a setup with the 13900K but I'm not quite sure if we even have to clock this really high because in benches like the Port Real the CPU does not even really matter anymore. The card was still on air again just for the basic testing to see if everything in the OS like voltage control everything works fine. Confirmed and now I will remove everything again and put it on the LN2 container. Stock cooler removed, also applied new paste to the GPU. LN2 cooler pretty much ready to go. It's one of my older models. It's the Raptor 3. I think I made this in like, I don't even know, like 2011, 2012, something like this. But it has enough area and also a big enough contact surface to also still work with the latest Gen 4090s. Also on the GPU, we are going to use an Elmore Hot product and this is like an adapted backplate. It's a, actually just a fat PCB, like very thick PCB for stability and if we remove the thermal pad you can see there are some, I don't know how to say it, like coils and through these coils you can just run some current and thus cause the PCB to get warm and we can use this as a heater for the backside because this will just be very beneficial for the memory to maintain higher clocks. I also drilled some holes through there in areas where I thought like there are no traces underneath. I hope so at least, but this way I hope it will work. Setup is completely assembled, ready to go. We added a bit of paper towel here and there just to catch some condensation drops in case it's not like fully insulated, like no liquid tape or anything on there, but should be good for a quick test to see how it behaves with the XOC BIOS with additional voltage. Um, the EVC is still attached, we still have the multimeter attached to check the GPU voltage. Fan on the back just pointed towards the power stages. No fan on the front right now on these power stages. I will just keep an eye on the temperature and see what kind of region we will get once it's getting low. But there is always some heat or cold spreading through the PCB once you cool it down, so it could also just be fine this way. We are now also running Wireview on the Strix, even though it's using the like the flipped connector on the ASUS card, but without the cooler there's sufficient space also to use like the normal version to keep track of the power consumption, which will definitely be quite interesting with the XOC BIOS. Also, once we increase the voltage, which we should be able to do using the EVC. As you can see, it's attached, monitoring is working. Should be quite interesting. We will just start slowly with about minus 30 degrees on the GPU and just go step by step. Still a first run to see if everything is in line at about minus 30 for both in GPU and CPU. CPU is just running at 6G to have a stable base. And as you can see, at like minus 30 and slight memory overclocking, it's running just around 1500 megahertz on the memory. The card consumes about 400 watt. I applied an offset of about 100 millivolt in the EVC, running load 1.16 volt. And we can straight see an increase of about 80 to 90 watt under load. It's quite insane. Like same clocks, just voltage increase. Also quite interesting, the VRM temperature of the Strix, even though we are not actively cooling them, like directly no cooler contact and under load it's about 70 degrees Celsius. Benchmark run is just over right now and you can see instantly a drop in temperature. We needed a little bit more juice because the card started crashing just below 3.2 gigahertz and you can see over 700 watt power draw on the card at only 1.19 volt. The highest score we had so far was just above 29,000 points. That's about globally, I don't know, something like 20th, 25th, 25th place. GPU clock 3.2 gigahertz. The result should be higher, like much higher. But our problem is still that the card, I don't know if the card is broken or what's going on, but it's still just running X8, same as what we had before on water and air. Also quite interesting, the container runs at about minus 30 degrees Celsius and GPU is going up to plus 10. And that's because the board power draw is like 720 watt. 
I almost had a stroke when I looked at the voltage. I just increased the voltage by another, I don't know, like 30 millivolt, maybe 35 millivolt. And this jumped to like 1.7, I was, okay, goodbye GPU. But then I noticed it was maybe not the best idea to place it on the container because if I touch this on the back, <laughs> it seems like it got a bit too cold. So far, Port Royal, we're definitely lacking the PCI Express lanes of the card. At least that's my assumption, because if we look at the clock, I think we're missing like at least 800 points. Then we switched to Times by Extreme, which is a little bit older. And that seems not to be relying so much on the PCI Express lanes, because with the same clocks, just above 3.2 GHz on the GPU, we could get the fifth place in the Hall of Fame. But on the other hand, the Times by Extreme is a bit more CPU dependent. It needs a lot more cores. And I can also see that the first rank, like the first place, was done with the 5995WX Threadripper, which has a lot more cores. So he's getting a bump through the CPU score or through the CPU test. Right now, we're trying to figure out why we cannot boot anymore because I thought in times by extreme because it's CPU dependent, we're just going to clock the CPU to like 6.6. .6. Should be no problem, I thought. Was at like minus 100 degrees Celsius, but when I dialed in those settings, the system decided it's not going to boot anymore. And I'm trying to figure out why. It's been about one more hour and we definitely had to downclock the memory on the card. You can see it's pulling like 850 watt right now. We saw even numbers very close to 900 watt. And that's because we are running about 1.3 volt in 3D. Right now it just went down because it went into 2D mode as you can see. Also not even too cold. It's only minus 40 right now. CPU also not too cold. Only running 6.4 gigahertz on the CPU, but we could definitely feel some kind of degradation on the memory, like not permanent, but just due to the cold spreading through the PCB of the card, that the memory clock is definitely suffering over time. And now finishing the times by extreme run. And let's see what kind of score we can get if we can finally hit something above 20,900 points or not. That's worse than before. And it's just weird. Sometimes you just apply the same clock in Afterburner and suddenly you have 60 megahertz less than before. And the problem right now is that we are about to run out of liquid nitrogen. I think we have about 15 liters left and that equals probably like five runs. Not too much left. And because we had to lower the memory clock from 1515 to 1500 megahertz, yeah, we have a performance penalty right now, but we have a good increase in GPU clock, 3300 megahertz on the GPU right now. We made a good progress, at least on the hardware overclocking level, because we can get the 4090 to constantly run at like 3350 megahertz. That's always fine. But for whatever reason, 3 d Mark decides to only use like 700 megahertz in the first 10 seconds of the test. And I absolutely have no idea what causes this. Here you can see the monitoring graph in times of extreme. And for whatever reason, the 4090 Strix like the first 10 seconds, it just decides to be lazy. You can see it's 2600 megahertz and afterwards always 
like we could go up to above 3400 megahertz it would definitely pass but we're losing so much performance in the first 10 seconds it's like one or two fps overall and that's definitely what we're missing bad timing but no ln2 left well, with no more liquid nitrogen, there is not much left we can do. And we also had like a lot of performance problems. First of all, we're missing half of the PCI Express slot. Like not literally, but for whatever reason, the card is still only running X8. We also tried to investigate the PCB area. Looks all fine, nothing we could see. Tried different boards, obviously. Uh, different PCI Express slots and everything. Different CPUs could also be a CPU issue, but seems like it's a problem with a card. And that's definitely giving us a performance penalty because we were like running 3380 megahertz on the GPU, no problem. But we were so much behind cards that were only running like 3200 megahertz. And also we noticed that most of these benches like Times by Extreme and Port Royal, Port Royal they are just memory benches. Because if you go on the Hall of Fame, you can see cards that are running 1600 megahertz on the memory. You need more than 300 megahertz on the GPU to make up for that. And that's almost impossible to do. So in the end, the best you can do is spin for memory on these cards. And then if you have like an average GPU, that will definitely do the job. And that could also explain why some ambient cooled cards are still better than some LN2 overclocked results because it's just all memory dependent. We'll see if there's any chance to rescue these tricks to somehow fix the PCI Express load. And also I have to look into why the first 10 seconds of 3D mic are always clocking lower. Like sometimes, as I said before, 700 megahertz, sometimes only 2600 megahertz. And we're definitely also losing performance there. Despite all these problems we had, I think it's still quite cool what kind of results we could get. 22,400 points in the graphics test of Times by Extreme, which is currently ranked sixth or seventh. And considering all these PCI Express lot issues, I think that's still quite okay. And if we manage to fix these, then I guess rank two or three at least should be doable. XOC BIOS, definitely something interesting, but something you probably don't want to do with an ambient or water-cooled card because it's also disabling safety features like no more temperature lock. And if you run into like, I don't know, plus 120 degrees Celsius on the GPU, it's very likely that's going to kill your GPU. So there's like no safety features anymore. And that's why this is definitely something I would only do with liquid nitrogen for cooling. So much about this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye.